energy around me. I just need sun, you're so cloudy. I wake up good, you're so grouchy. Please get from around me. When the truth don't work, you start telling lies. Thought you were down the ride, you weren't down the ride. Caught switching, you were picking sides. Don't blink, caught slipping like a slippery slide. I was shooting dice till I got a nosebleed. Money on the floor, can't get cold feet. Took an L, should have put it in the all free. Lord, forgive me for my sins, don't know of me. Scary thoughts, I got scary thoughts. Lost control, now I'm taking charge. Breaking bills, friends breaking off. You could be the old boy. He walks free, making bond on Tuesday. It has this family angry and confused. And I'm trying to figure out how he got a bond that was so low for trying to kill my kid. Arnold Daniel trying to figure out why Ryan Lee Wen is out of jail after allegedly shooting his son Kobe. He tried hit me with a sledgehammer, but that's not gonna work because I'm too fast. So then what did he do? Got a gun. Boom. Show me right here. It's all on video Saturday afternoon on Candlewood Lane. You'll see kids playing, hear a gunshot, then Kobe realizes he's hit. <laughs> When allegedly fired through his front window, the bullet went in Kobe's arm and out the other side. I was wondering if you wanted to, uh, if if you covered the story about the Asian man that shot the uh, six-year-old kid in Michigan right. last weekend. I'm glad that I'm you... I'm not sure if you're too familiar with that because yeah. that story gained no traction this weekend. And I did a show on it yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to touch on that. So I'm curious if you would like to cover it. Yeah, I would like you okay, to talk... I, I want you to talk about it tonight because it was something that I was going to bring up. But I want, you to, I want you to talk about it because that's very serious. I was on a channel with a, a friend of mine um, on YouTube. Okay. And he was talking about that story mm -hmm. because that man, that piece of garbage, I got to call him that he's garbage. Um, he could, he damn near killed that kid. <laughs> he damn near killed that kid. And the right. father, I don't personally like the fact that the father came out and said that he was afraid of him because you don't, even if you feel that way, you don't let your enemy or you don't let the, you don't get on TV and say you're afraid. You're, you're the father. I don't want to hear Black, I don't want to hear yeah. a black man saying he's afraid. No, that's time for you to stand up for your family and protect your family. But with that said, right. um, this is the thing. And, and, right. and I'm not trying to hate on people of the Asian uh, back, people that people that are Asian. And Asian uh, compass is, is a large pool. There's many people that are put in that pool of Asian. You got East East Indians that are considered Asian. But what I want to say is, is that during the, yeah. all, all during the summer, we were being told, or during this summer, or, or right now, that there's been mm -hmm. a uptake of hate yeah, right towards now. there's been an uptake of hate towards asian people i get that yes there have because there was a narrative mm -hmm. that they were bringing the virus over here however when you look at the mm -hmm. um i said this before and i think he was on a panel with me um when you look at the fbi statistics i'm using mm -hmm. the fbi statistics because that's their, that's what they that's what they study crime most of the hate crime is higher yes, towards black people than it is even towards Asian people. And it's been that way for decades and decades and God knows how many more decades that I haven't even named. Now, with that said, the Sorry. reason why I bring this up Sorry. is because now that this, this Asian man, and I know Asian encompasses so much, but this man happens to be Asian. He uh, abused yep. a black child and shot his gun at a black child. The black child was playing outside. He didn't rob him. He didn't destroy his business or any of that, nope. right? And where is the nope. Asian community to come out in droves yeah. with their organizations and say, yeah. we denounce him. What he did was wrong. That was yeah. hate yeah. towards a black yep. young child. Where is that at, brother? Now, I give you the, I give you the floor now. Well, you know, the, the whole thing is since they've been emboldened with this Asian hate crime uh, legislation, um, now they feel like they have a security blanket over them where they can do whatever they want right now at this point and uh, not be held accountable. 
Right. So this gentleman, or uh, I use the term very, very fucking loosely. Excuse my language. Uh, sorry about that. I'm using the second platform. Uh, this, this, this guy, this individual decides he would like to open fire at a child that is uh, posing no visible threat or harm to him. Uh, he's not, quote, unquote, standing his ground to, quote, unquote, protect his property or anything of that nature. Um, I don't want to go too, too much into the into that stuff because we already know the uh, the, the schoolery that uh, is involved in that type of stuff and they make decisions on the initial decision what the bail was set at, mm-hmm. um, et cetera, et cetera, because we're looking at an attempted murder here, basically. This is what this equates to is an attempted murder from my eyes, but I'm not a lawyer or, or uh, a judge or a prosecutor or anything of that nature, but this looks like an attempted murder to me. And the Asian community basically needs to step up and denounce this type of behavior, but I don't think that that will ever happen because, like I say, because of this, uh, they get special privileges. No one can do anything to them, but uh, if they do something to somebody else, uh, shouldn't the same rules apply? Like, listen, we're giving you a certain protection and we're affording you a certain protection. Right. If you do the same type of thing on the back end, on the reverse side, if the shoe's on the other foot, yes, you sir. should have the right to prosecute you with those same special stipulations that those that commit a crime against you are going to be having to face. Right. Pretty much. So that's kind of what I wanted to lay out on that. I don't want to get too, uh, um, in. No, go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. But this uh-huh. is this is the thing that I must ask you, dear brother, um, that is uh-huh. hard for Talk me to, to swallow, me. which is why when I was on a YouTube channel with my man, um, with a friend of mine, he said, hey, if you hurt mine, mm-hmm. I'm going to hurt yours. And we were having this dialogue about, well, um, um, a lot of times as a black man, if you are uh, emotional and reactive because society expects us to get emotional and reactive and you go out there and you take yeah. his life, and you've already got a family because he's got other no. kids. Now your wife, your kids, no. they, she becomes a single mother, and now you're in jail doing lots of time, yeah. and now your family's been impacted. But his attitude yeah. was that as we as black men, we've got to mm-hmm. stop setting mm-hmm. back and letting people do this to us because other groups, if you put your hands on their kids, they're going to make you pay. For example, oh, yeah. and, I, and I know people, it's not going to be popular what oh, I've got to say here, but if this was a black man, Go for it. Who yeah, shot, who, who mm-hmm. shot a young Asian kid who was just playing outside, minding his own business because he didn't want him near his oh, property. The Asian community would have come out mm-hmm. and you would have had throughout this whole country a news report where they would have been saying, this is another example of Asian hate, yeah. right? And here's an example yeah. in which yeah. an Asian child was even... Yeah shot at and could have been murdered and I guarantee you that black man would have been yep. prosecuted at the highest level of the law, the highest level of the law oh, yeah. and he would not be out right. where people like you and me or even the Asian community could be debating about why is it that this black man shot at an Asian child and he's out and there was no charges mm-hmm. filed against him he shot this child mm-hmm. and there's no charges out against him and matter of fact i think he has a restaurant or a business in the community no black person i'm sorry yes, should patronize yes, his sir. business and i tell the truth on that yeah. what is your thoughts about that brother well the way i see it uh on the podcast yesterday i spoke with a brother that's in the network and in the loop his name is brother Shannon. Mm-hmm. uh this actually happened in the same county that he lived in and it's just uh, coincidental that me and him uh, had a, a podcast uh, the previous uh, weekend before this story uh, kind of gained a little bit of traction before this went down. Right. And uh, he kind of um, got the inside information to where he actually went to the victim's home and spoke with the father of the victim of the shooting. This is how far it went. So I felt it was mandatory for me to get this brother on the uh, on the network so we could speak about this firsthand right. and not get the information that the uh, general media had given us. But if it was shoes reversed to one of the other foot, it would have been a national story and it would have gained so much more traction. That's why I felt it was uh, necessary for me to, because um, your platform is a lot bigger than mine, per se, 
and my uh, and and the other brother, Shannon, uh, brother Shannon's platform. Your, your platform is your garage. Mm-hmm. So I just kind of wanted to slide that in, like please cover this. Uh, I'm late to the show, so I'm not sure if it was covered or not. But I was just like, you know, I want to flash pass this on mm-hmm. to all black platforms and make sure that this story gains the traction that it needs to gain. Right. Now, um, with that being said, let me answer the question that you were saying that you were getting to. There's actually two sets of rules, and we all know this. This is nothing new. You know what I mean? This is nothing new going on. But my thing is, where is our protection? Where are the anti-black hate crime legislation at? Where were those bills at? Because we've been, uh, for as long as I can remember, we've been getting hung from trees and shit like that. I mean, we're not getting no uh, special blanket of protection. Brother, so why I... should um, people that pulled up late in the game, they came to the game late. Mm-hmm. Why should they get special treatment? Well, should, sorry, I, brother, should I bring up a familiar name to you that happened back, with, what did this happen in the, um, I think in the 90s? James Bird. He was in Texas, right? You had two yahoos on a truck that grabbed him, tied him up to the truck, dragged his body and pulled, and pulled his body yep. apart. Decided and I think decide, I think that's the last time, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken, yeah. in which they interacted mm-hmm. a hate bill. Mm-hmm. Look, 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 my brother. They already have mm-hmm. uh, hate. They already have hate bill policies on the book. This is what happens when things happen to black people in this mm-hmm. country. They don't enforce shit, yes. and then they turn around as Joe Biden yeah. did, come up yeah. with an executive order about Asian hate, and then they call it the, well, it's not about Asian people, it's about uh, the co- uh, coronavirus type of protection for, and the thing is like this, I get it. Okay, yeah. Asian people Sorry. were mm-hmm. getting assaulted in the streets by people, you, you know, who whatever reason they were getting assaulted. I get it. There was over, what, 200 or more uh, assaults on Asian people this year. I get it. I get it. I get it. However, however, black people have been catching hell in this country for over 500 years before Asian people were even integrating over to this country. When you talk about the railroads, when you talk about the railroads, this is what they fail to tell most people. This is what they fail to tell most people. Do you know? Yes. Asian, Uh uh, I think the Chinese to be more specific, Yes, they were involved in building the railroads too. However, most of the railroads that were built in this country before Chinese got here were built in the eastern part of the country down to the southern part of the country before they even got here. Black people, black men built those railroads. And then when they went into the western part of the country, they hadn't finished all the railroad tracks in the western part of the country. And then that's when they brought Chinese over to kind of help finish up the railroad tracks going into the west part of the country. But the majority of the country, the railroad tracks were built majority by black men that were put into labor, slave labor, put into indentured servitude, black men that were uh, on those, uh, putting those train tracks down, hoping to get their goddamn freedom, so and so forth, and free men. I just had to bring that up because we got a reason to have attitude. We got a reason to make an argument. For these re- for these very reasons, historically. Are you still there, brother? Okay. So I'm not putting any hate on the Asian community. I'm simply saying if, if the, if the, but I gotta be honest, if the Asian community or those that say that they're activists in the Asian community, if we don't see them mm-hmm. coming out in droves on their social media and denouncing what that man did, mm-hmm. then we have to mm-hmm. look at the Asian community. Those that claim to be activists, claim yep. that they want people to be treated right. If we don't see their leaders come yep. out and speak up, you got to look at them with a side eye. I'm sorry. You have to mm-hmm. look at them with a side eye. I'll say fact, that. Fact, fact. And, and I'm going to leave it at that, brother. I'll leave it at that. Thank you for taking my call. Thank you for um, calling in tonight. I, I will appreciate definitely that. Um, reach out to you. Yeah, I appreciate you. I'll you in the future. I'd love to have you on my platform if possible. Oh, Ed, most definitely, brother. I'm, uh, I'm going to be doing more um, regular programs like this going into the weekend because um, I, yeah. I took a little bit of a break. But now I'm about to uh, reload up here. Okay. So, oh, but did you get my, did you hear the story that I brought up? Like, 
I was talking about uh, critical race theory for a short moment, and I like to call it, it's based on giving okay. out real history. And a lot of people who make okay. their arguments against it will say, well, Dr. King said it's about judging people by the content of their character and all of that. And I get that, right? But I brought up a case in Mississippi okay. where you had a mm -hmm. black, a male student who's black and a black female. Guess what? They lived up to hard I'm work. That situation. Yeah, yes, they, they, they lived up to hard yeah. work and character yeah. and they got valedictorian mm -hmm. of the school. Mm -hmm. The, the white people in the school yep. did not like that. So they went to the school board or the superintendent yep. said, hey, what's going on with this? And what did they do? They made a cold valedictorian, male and yep. female, which they which in school, they don't yes. do that. That's not how it yes. works. And this is another Never. example. That's of unprecedented. How, right. And so this is an example mm -hmm. of how you have a mm -hmm. black male and a black female, young students who actually lived up to the very thing mm -hmm. that people who say that they don't like critical race theory say, hey, it's about character. Well, they had character and mm -hmm. they still had to deal with racism in this case. Fact, fact, fact. And that's so crazy because I was just alluding to in the chat room, um, to Frida, that um, Brother Shannon, who uh, she, she works with as well, he had also, that's the first time I heard that news. That was like last week from what I understand, or maybe a week before. Right. Um, but I definitely heard that same story. So when I saw that she picked up on it, I was like, good, because these are stories that we need to get out a little more just to know that this 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 ugly this this this, this ugly animal is still rearing its head all around town. So we can't pretend that the racism us is gone. You know what I mean? We, we you know, just because we have so much so political party in office, X, Y, Z, we gotta be bigger than that and, and, and think about ourselves. You know, but on that note, brother, thank you very much. I'm gonna be listening in. Um, All right. Let me get to doing a couple of things around here. Uh, okay, thank you very man. much. I'm tuned in. Uh, salute to you, brother. Please keep up the good work. All right, brother. You take care. We'll have you back again soon. So I want to thank that brother for calling thank in. You. Thank you. Thank you for calling in. Go check out his 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 platform. Um. Yeah, Sunday Night Smoke Podcast. Sunday Night Smoke Podcast. Sunday Night, TV and, Sunday um, Night Smoke Podcast. Where else can, let everybody know, too, where else they can find okay. you on social media before you go. Okay, I'm kind of new to the game, so I only broadcast on half television mm -hmm. and YouTube. Okay. So that'll be uh, Sunday Night Smoke, S-U-N-D-A-Y-N-I-T-E, mm -hmm. S-M-O-K-E, or one word. Face podcast. Okay. Uh, and um, that's the handle that you can find me on uh, basically YouTube and have television. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, brother. I appreciate it. I'm tuned in. I'm, I'm watching, brother. I'm watching. I'm listening and I'm being proactive. Thank you very much. You take care of yourself, brother. Take care. All right, everybody. Check out Smoke's podcast. He's on HAPS. He's on YouTube. Check the brother out. He called in. I'm actually glad that he called in and brought up that subject matter because that was a story that I was going to explore tonight uh, that I think is a necessary to explore. Uh, it is a damn shame. And I'm going to say once again that if the uh, Asian community or those leaders in the Asian community that have spoken out against Asian hate, if they do not come together in droves, and call out the very hate of this of their own as they would call out the of the hate when they say well black males are attacking asian people doing doing this situation of asian hate so they say if they don't speak out because they certainly would ask us to speak out they ask our leaders to be held accountable then uh, you got to look at them with a side eye. You got to say there is no coalition. There is no uh, black and Asian court. There, there is really, there is no coalition. People in America are not, we're not in a melting pot. We're in a solid bowl in which we have people of different races and creeds and ethnic backgrounds who live in segregated communities, either uh, forcefully or either they put themselves in those communities purposely to be away from certain groups and certain people. The most, segregated, the most segregated day in America is Sunday, segregated by church that you go to, affiliations, and in a lot of cases by race. 
we don't understand each other. There are so many stereotypes out there. And here is a story that's not getting the kind of traction that it should get. And I think it's not getting the traction that it should get because we live in a country where black life doesn't have any value to it by the, by American standards. Our life has no standard. That's why when Black Lives Matter hit the scene, you had people rejecting the idea of Black Lives Matter. And re because they rejected the idea of it, they came up with what? Counter approaches. What is those counter approaches? Well, blue lives matter. Oh, black lives don't matter. All lives matter. They came up with a counter slogan as a way to simply say that black lives do not matter. When the slogan was originally put out there to define that black people were being killed by police and that black lives matter. Now, I don't agree with the organization Black Lives Matter as it stands right now. I don't like their website. I don't like the fact that when you go on their website, there's very little about the black family, the black man. There's so much about intersectionality, all this other stuff. I don't agree with the organizational structure or any of that, but I do agree with the concept that black lives do matter because for so long, black people have been getting killed uh, by cops and our lives have not mattered. And I don't want to hear the crap about the black on black crime because black people do speak out about black on black crime. And matter of fact, it's bullshit to say that because every ethnic group commits crime on each other when you live in close proximity to each other. So most of the murders and homicide and domestic crimes with guns are committed by when it comes to white people, white people on white people and every other ethnic group just the same. So I don't want to hear that. Oh, well, what about black on black? Well, what about white on white crime? White people kill each other every day in this country. Other ethnic groups kill each other every day, but somehow they want to make uh, crime and killing the pathology of the black people, of black people. And that's just more Tell the truth. bullshit. Now, 